So I've had a, a specific request to do a video uh, series um, on basically what is the most appropriate sword to use for various sorts of British swordsmanship um, on the basis that people are sometimes using inappropriate things to do various sorts of broadsword, um, or so I am told. So uh, here is a part one of what's going to be a three-part series um, looking at what sort of sword you want for, for different British systems. Um, and we're going to start with uh, George Silver. Oh, and I also want to apologise for the sound. Something funny has gone on with the um, microphone in my phone, I think, and it's sounding a bit foggy recently. So, uh, sorry about that. So let's start with Silver. What sort of sword does Silver want you to use? Um, Silver is fairly specific, okay? He talks about the short sword or back sword, and these are interchangeable terms. And the weapon he's using, of course, is not particularly short. Um, it is a back sword, which means it has a thick back along the back there, and is sharp all the way down there, and just on the top third there, and has a basket around the hand. Um, and Silver himself says that you really don't want to do his system without a basket, even though, uh, you know, 80 to 90% of it is perfectly translatable into a, a sort of a, a medieval cross-hilted arming sword. Um, but Silver wants you to have hand protection, um, and he's also reasonably specific about the length of the weapon, and he gives us instructions on how to measure the perfect length of your sword. To know the perfect length of your sword, you shall stand with your dagger drawn, which of course should be an alehouse dagger, um, keeping out straight your dagger arm, drawing back your sword as far as you conveniently can, not opening the elbow joint of your sword arm, and that's important. Um, and look what you can draw within your dagger, and that is the just length of your sword. So, standing sword foot back. I hold my sword like this, and I don't open my elbow joint, remember? And I stick my dagger arm out straight, and I should just be able to pass the point of my sword within the dagger, like so. Okay? So... This sword here is exactly perfect length for me. And I just measured it, and it is exactly 83 centimetres in the blade. Um, so that is the perfect length of the sword for me. Now, some people like to get the longer sword they possibly can, so they stretch out more than you conveniently do, or particularly open that elbow joint. And you can see that allows me to get a much, 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 much longer sword. But that's not what silver intends, okay? Silver is very specific that if your sword is too long, you won't be able to uncross within distance. And so, as tempting as it might be, limit yourself to that length. Don't exaggerate it, okay? Just imagine that you're in a grapple, everything is tied up, and the only thing you can bring online is your point, and that is the length of your sword. And I can tell you from experience, even something that's just a few centimetres longer than this, such as my back sword, which is actually a little bit too long for me, um, suddenly, in close fight, I can't get that back without compromising my balance and being thrown over. Now, Silver is also very specific about the weight of the sword, okay? He says you want a light sword, um, and criticised the Italians by saying their weapons, most commonly, are too heavy to both defend and offend in due time. And by these last two courses, many valiant men have lost their lives. So he wants your sword to be light. But what what is light, okay? So what he's comparing it to are English rapiers of the time, and, you know, other things that were around, such as great big great sword like two-handed swords and quarterstaves and things like that. Okay, so what does he mean by a light sword? So this one here um, is, is quite thin and quite light, and despite its length, it is extremely light, okay? This weighs a little over a kilo, okay? Very, very light for a sword of its size. Now, in, you know fencing for fun or competition or points um, where I want to win, I would probably choose this sword to do silver with because it is extremely light and 
fast and maneuverable and gives me all those advantages for fencing. However, if I actually wanted to kill somebody, I would take this one, okay? This is a much, much heavier sword. This weighs uh, a li actually a little over one and a half kilos, which sounds like a lot, but it's, it's really, really nicely balanced, this one. So it really doesn't feel like it, but it certainly feels a lot heftier, okay? And swings with a great deal more authority. Now, I think this is much more closer to what Silver wants in a sword because he what, what he tells us about the sort of blows that he delivers. So Silver says that the blow being strongly made sometimes um, taketh clean away the hand from the arm, as has many times been seen. The blow cutteth off the hand, the arm, the leg, and sometimes the head. Again, a full blow upon the face or head with a short, sharp sword is most commonly death. A full blow upon the neck, shoulder, arm, or leg in dangerous life cutteth off the veins, muscles, and sinews, perisheth the bones. These wounds made by the blow in respect of perfect healing are the loss of limbs or maims incurable forever. He also tells us that the blow requireth the strength of a man to be warded. So he's obviously delivering powerful blows. Um, and if we hark back to my little series on markedly effective cutting, um, You'll remember all sorts of accounts from, say, the Napoleonic Wars, where people are receiving dozens of slashes with a sabre and continuing to be martially functional. Whereas what Silver is talking about is much more like the sort of cuts that you get from descriptions of Highland battles, where people are cut in two, their heads are removed, their arms are lopped off, and they are dead. Now, weight is a necessary part of delivering a blow with that sort of authority. Allenson Wynn, at the end of the 19th century, says this, says this explicitly. He says, and learning to use the weight of the sword, okay, even a reasonably heavy one, it of course is part of the art, okay, and it's an important part of Silver's art. Okay, the 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 open big open stances, the passing footwork, the big recoveries, and some of these big sort of medieval style charged wards and, and full power blows. Um, you really need a sword that has a certain amount of weight in it before that really makes sense. So you really cannot do silver with something say like a Hutton saber. Okay, this is just too light and too short to have that make any sense whatsoever, okay? So, silver, you want something that is of perfect length, which is quite long for one of these sorts of weapons, um, but not too long, don't exaggerate it. And you want something that is as heavy as you can comfortably wield, and that will depend a lot on your strength and stature, and of course on the on the balance of the weapon itself, okay? You can't just go straight on, on, on weight. It also depends how it feels in the hand. But... There is certainly a major advantage if you can swing something that's a little bit heavier with a little bit or more authority, um, particularly if you are recreating a you know, proper deadly fight in a quasi-military circumstance, which is, of course, what Silver is about. He's a battlefield system. His system is supposed to be used in service of the prince as well as in private quarrels. Now, a lot of people, when doing Silver, use sheer bonners, um, and part of the reason for that is uh, simply availability, okay? We have a lot of particularly dark wood shear in the in the club simply because that was the best and most available basket hilted thing that you could get long enough to do silver with, okay? And obviously these didn't exist when silver was around, so they are inappropriate in that way. Um, the length is fine, the weight is fine, but the thing that uh, you've got to be careful about is the fact that, of course, the Shea of Honor is designed to stick your finger over the cross so that you've got the ability to do that classic Italian false edge rising cut because you've got that nice second point of leverage with the finger over the cross. That is inappropriate for silver, absolutely. Um, putting your finger over the cross changes the relationship of the sword and the arm to such a significant extent that it will distort your technique if you're doing silver with your hand there, okay? Silver is using a back sword with a hammer grip, nice and loose, um, so there's nothing wrong with using a shear on it, just don't stick your finger over there, pull it back, 
and use the thing like a back sword and then it will be fine.